Hello everyone, this is Mehul Mehta and welcome to my YouTube channel. So for today's podcast, I have an old friend of mine. So she is Komal Sajdeva. So Komal and I did our undergraduate from the same university, that is VIT University Vellore. And she did her undergrad in electrical engineering and then worked for almost three years at Bank of America. And after that, she uh, got into master's in financial en engineering at Columbia University. So Columbia is, you know, like the university, Columbia University is everyone's dream college. So let's understand, you know, how did she write her SOP, how, like about her LOR, TOEFL and JRE score, and you know, how were her, how was her experience about the whole master's degree at Columbia? So Komal, like if you can tell us like about your, your you know, your working experience at Bank of America and your, and your undergraduate degree. Sure, Mehul. Uh, thanks for having me. Uh, my background, like you mentioned, I did my undergraduate from VIT in electrical and electronics engineering. Uh, and thereafter worked with Bank of America for almost three years. Uh, at Bank of America, I was a software engineer and a part of the foreign exchange team, wherein I managed their trading strategies and stuff like that. And that's how I got interested with financial engineering. Um, and yes, I decided to go for my master's, apply to a couple of places, uh, but I stopped applying as soon as I got into Colombia. That's the fact. And uh, came here to do my master's from Colombia, and now I'm working in the city. Perfect, perfect. Thank you so much for walking through your work, like working experience and your education. So, like, can you tell the viewers like what was your GRE and TOEFL score? Because like even I did not know your I do not know your GRE. So if you can tell like how how much was your GRE score and your TOEFL score? Sure. Uh, like uh, I would like to say to everybody that I know that uh, extremely uh, it's very important. You know when we are there, you know it's like something that oh your your GRE should be this much, your TOEFL should be that much. So I would like to tell everyone that my GRE was not too high. It was like about three twenty two. And my TOEFL was also like uh, not a perfect 120. Uh, it was 112, I think. Uh, I think two was a lucky number. <laughs> Both my scores ended in two. So yeah, and uh, I would like to tell that don't fret on it if you don't get a good GRE score. It's not that important. You you are saying that, you know, oh, my GRE score was normal. And then you say it was 322. <laughs> so it's it's I guess it's a it's a good score um though like and like how much uh, if you don't mind me asking like how much was your GPA during your undergraduate degree? Uh, on a scale of ten, my GPA was eight point three five. Again, uh, I was not a nine pointer or a a high extremely high scorer. Uh, so yeah, it was eight point three five, and if you convert it to a GPA scale of four, it was, I think, around 3.5. Perfect. About. Okay. Okay. And like, how was your SOP? Can you tell like more about like what all things you included in your statement of purpose and like, how was it structured? Like if you can give little, you know, detail about it and like what all things should someone include in their statement of purpose? Sure. So for me, uh, it was not uh, it was not a direct thing. Uh, it for the statement of purpose, uh, I basically took years to come up with my SOP. Uh, I applied like back in 2020. 2019 uh, once with a really really bad SOP which was not at all structured uh, I wrote what came to my mind uh, I referred internet which was a very very bad mistake uh, but the next year like 2020 I rewrote my SOP without referring my old SOP and just wrote anything um, that came to my mind but like slowly I started giving it a structure starting with slight introduction 
uh, what uh, what I want to achieve in future, like my future aspirations, my goals, and then uh, tying everything that like my undergrad, my internships, my work experience, or any research experience that I had with undergrad. I tied everything to what I want to do eventually in future, giving it a proper structure. And um, therefore, like, and I also mentioned in the last paragraph that how basically how that particular university or what courses interest me or some professors that interested me and uh, who do I want to work with uh, going forward if I'm accepted with that university, things like that. And finally ended with that. Uh, so basically I would, recommend everyone that uh, just first of all write a very rough draft which be honest uh, now all of us have chat gpt but do not use chat gpt because your mind is going to get clouded and uh, just write very very honestly uh, structure can come structure can follow afterwards understood and like uh, can you also tell like did you had any um anything any quant related projects i understand you were working for forex market and you were also a software developer but uh like did you have any quant related projects or research paper or like does that make an impact in your application so if you can tell little about it uh, I did not have a quant related project or a quant related research paper, but I did have a research paper that was like an integration of electrical and computer science. I think uh, and overall I had two research papers back in my undergrad. Uh, so I feel that that is very helpful. Mm, any kind of research work basically writing a research paper or like implementing a research paper is very important because uh, MFE being like a very intense degree I feel it can be helpful if you if you just have some research background because in industry also like when I'm working here and like people see that how well can you implement a research paper? How well can you understand and then implement it? So I think that that can be really, really helpful. Understood. So having a research paper will be a great idea uh, to include in your statement of purpose also, right? Because I understand it is it will be there in your resume. But do you think yeah. like uh, if something you have done, let's say in in let's say electrical engineering, including that in the statement of purpose, will that be a good idea? Yeah, definitely, because it shows like your dedication that, you know, why you underwent research, what all steps did you take to do that research? Uh, what all steps did you take to do that particular project? Why why did you think at that particular time that that project was interesting? What was your, you know, uh, line of thought or uh, anything? So that, that helps uh, the administers here to like understand that how you think or what are what are all the things important to you that helps them make the particular decision whether or not this candidate is suitable for the program understood and like how about your letter of recommendations because you know few people say that you should take all your LORs from a university few people say that you know it should be a mix of industry and academia like how was your case if you can tell a little about it yeah, so my case was I took two uh, LORs from my university, VIT University, both with the professors who I did research with and uh, one from my manager uh, at Bank of America. So it was essentially a mix. So like uh, you mentioned that you took your um, letter of recommendation from university. So does the like does the positions of the professor or let's say does the qualification of the professor do matter like you know some professors they they have done phds or let's say some are sitting at a head of department so do you think does that make an impact in the overall overall process i don't think so because um as long as uh basically the i think the letter of recommendation only tells how like it it basically brings out all the qualities and i don't think the the level of professor or like anything the basically the post on which the professor is matters that much understood 
And so coming on to your master's experience, because I guess most of the people watching this podcast is interested in understanding how was your whole experience at Columbia University. So like, can you first tell like, what was your tuition fee? Because, you know, many people, they are not aware about, you know, the total cost that they might incur in the whole 18 months or 24 months of the program. So if you first can tell like, how, how long was your program? And like, and second is how, how was your, how much is your tuition fee? um okay so my program was 18 months and my tuition fee that was mentioned on i20 was $88,000 uh, it's it's a bit on higher side but uh, yeah i think that's for the ivs wow that's i guess that's a lot you said $88,000 yeah. for a 18 month yeah. program yeah wow because i remember like my program fee was $60,000 I got a five thousand uh thousand dollar scholarship, so it became fifty five, and again, like I had a research assistant, so I did not get any semester off or something, but I was getting somewhere close to eight hundred dollars every month, so that actually helped helped me in basically paying all my rents, utilities, and the food costs. So if you ask me, my overall, <laughs> it was like sixty thousand. My overall cost of the MFE was sixty thousand dollars. And you were saying it for you, it was very close to $90,000. Yeah, yeah, very close. Unfortunate, but yeah, New York is a very, very expensive city <laughs> to be in. Yeah. Uh, but I think uh, it was worth it because the alumni network over here and uh, the guidance that I received uh, during the program was like helpful. So it really depends on... Uh, what do you eventually want to do? Um, I would like to tell everyone, like all everybody who watches this ever, I would like to tell that, you know, be very clear with your um, goals or uh, what you want to do post masters, because this time can like go by very quickly. And if you're not sure or if you're not clear with what you want to do, just hold back and uh, think on it and uh, like you should be basically clear with what your objectives are, where you want to go. Uh, what is it that you're trying to achieve by doing masters? So if you're clear with that, I think then it's worth it. Understood. Yeah, I mean, putting in that that much amount of money, I feel like no. someone who has like a clear vision of why some like why to come to US to pursue this masters. Like, I guess that would be a great idea because I've seen like um. A couple of folks going back to India because they did not get a job and the only reason was they did not understand the whole curriculum wisely like yeah. so yeah that's like that's like a tough choice to make so like uh, uh like Komal if you can tell about you know what all subjects you studied during your master's degree uh yeah so I studied optimization C++ uh stochastics in like two parts uh stochastics was by far the most difficult but uh, a bit on like foundations of financial engineering monte carlo simulation statistics fundamental analysis machine learning um everything was touched and um yeah if you are like uh, again one more thing that i would like to say is uh for anybody pursuing financial engineering like do your homework well before coming here and like wh why do you say that because when you say like do your homework well is it like because it, it, it is so difficult and it is so challenging are you are you saying because of that or like is there any other reason it's like uh, just overall like for me the coursework was like really intense and uh, basically you don't get enough time to like learn everything in depth uh, and everything is like just barely touched because of the time limitations and like of course like each semester is just 12 weeks and 12 weeks are not enough to understand a concept uh, of course the concepts are like naturally on the on the difficult side or on a harder side if you if you have not done it in your undergrad and something like that so it does not like really click uh for that you need to spend time on it and there's not enough time 
but if you do your homework well while you know back in your home country or like when I, when you're starting preparing for it uh, like as soon as you get your admit is when you start preparing for it uh, anything basically internships uh, coursework everything should be well planned before you enter us and like uh, because uh, one more thing which i wanted to ask is as soon as you come in the fall term that is like uh, so for viewers who who do not understand fall term i mean like in the month of august most of these masters program starts and like as yeah. soon as you have to come you have to apply for internships so like komal yeah. if you can t tell about how was your internship experience or something like that like was it challenging or like was it really difficult to secure an internship or like or if you could tell about how about your batchmates also like how did they find the overall process um yeah so uh, finding an internship and a job is really challenging here in us especially given that we have campus placements back in india so uh, it was not a piece of cake uh, for anybody i would say like not even for the high scorers or for you know extreme low scorers it was same for everybody but uh, i would say like like i mentioned that as soon as you get your admit you should start preparing and like you should start applying when you get an admit because internships like they start they start opening internships really early so basically uh internships for summer of 2025 have already opened so basically if you're in india right now or if you're anywhere else you should basically start preparing and you should start applying that gives you an edge that you know as soon as you find your internship you're like basically free to concentrate on your coursework but as for me my experience was like very difficult because nobody told me this so uh, I found an internship very late uh, in the month of April and internships were like to start from June. So I found it very late. Uh, but yeah, eventually I feel that most of my batchmates did find an internship and everything. It's challenging, but the earlier you start, the better it is. Understood. So, okay. And like, what do you think is the placement scenario? Oh, like once you, because like, you know, everyone thinks of this, even uh, both of us, we, you know, we, we think about it, like we are putting in so much of, so, you know, so much of money, people come in, uh, they take education loans and, you know, so like, what do you think about the placement scenarios? Because uh, like paying $90,000 and like, what do you think? Is it, I mean, um, like how do you think like are the placement scenarios for different universities let's say someone because um, Columbia is a tier one university and if I see like North Carolina or let's say any any other tier two universities like um, Rutgers uh, or let's say Stony Brook uh, like what what do you think like uh, does the placement really uh, you know differs by a lot like is it something like um, if you enter into Columbia you'll you'll just you know like anything on that no it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you graduate from uh your placements do not depend on where you are graduating from but uh your internships or your job experiences depends on your skill set on how you work um i know that you know coming from a international country or coming from outside uh everybody thinks that you know it's it, it can be managed like you know deal with the problem as and when it comes so it's a very hard reality that over here no matter what university you're a part of nobody helps uh no matter how many career teams you have it can be good you can you know you can be lucky and you can find somebody good and you cannot be that lucky and you can find a career uh, committee which is not that helpful uh, for me, uh, I found a career committee which was not that helpful. Uh, so it doesn't really uh, matter. And as for a lot of my friends from like different universities also, I've, I've heard the same experiences that nobody really helps. It all depends on you, how you approach, how uh, how, how actively you're applying, how, how uh, actively you're preparing for it and all that is what matters university does not matter while securing a, a job or an internship certainly because you know a lot of lot of juniors reach out to me you know i got 
admission from let's say columbia or like, let's say carnegie mellon and you know they say like the fee structure is you know massive and they also yeah. they also get you know uh, let's say an admit or acceptance letter from nc state or let's say some other university like stevens or, or not stevens stevens is expensive also like uh, some other university who's yeah. the overall uh, if you see the cost structure is between 50 to 60 thousand dollars so every time i get this question and i'm like you know as what you said like it's it de- in the end it will depend what kind of skill set you have developed in the whole Absolutely. 18 months of degree yeah and like even before that like uh, i would like even the final ctc you get or even your base pay does not depend on what university you're graduating from it does not so do not keep that in mind uh, selecting a university should be purely based on what do you aim to achieve after your master's degree a b what coursework aligns with what you want to achieve after your master's degree so these two points just that i guess coursework what you mentioned like both both the points are so important because i know like i was looking at georgia tech uh like the master's program at georgia tech and in the in in the very first semester they are taught python uh, c plus plus matlab and there's one more language and i'm like four languages <laughs> In the very first yeah. semester, and some some someone coming from a let's say bachelor's like a commerce background, you know, who have never experienced programming. I mean, for him, it's so challenging, like understanding four different languages. So I I feel like please do understand like what kind of curriculum all the universities offer, so that mm-hmm. uh, because you do not end, want to end up in a situation where the coursework is so intense, and you yeah. as a candidate are not able to cope up with the coursework. Yeah absolutely yeah so like uh, um so this question i really wanted to ask and like this is for uh, most of the most of our juniors back in india like is it worth coming to united states for pursuing masters in financial engineering um it really depends so um basically the coursework what they're teaching over here is something that you can um learn over there there's no difference in the coursework or there's no difference in what you're going to learn academically over here or like uh, there are no new skills that you're going to develop here and which you cannot develop there uh, this is well, this is truth but why people come over here is uh, to network the mindset of people how you talk um, who you engage with on a regular basis. I feel the work is very different over here since I've also worked in India and I'm working over here. The work is very different. Uh, People talk differently. So it depends on what you want. Like I've been saying that, you know, you should be very clear with what you want to achieve from a master's degree. So it really depends on what you want. Uh, Can answer this question if it's worth coming to US or no. If you just want to like learn uh, things academically or like you want to gain knowledge that you can very well do from India. But if you want to do networking, um, want to be here for work or you know you plan to like work here for a couple of years, get that exposure and everything then i think that it can be worth it but it really depends on an individual how or what he or she wants and one more thing which i all which i want to share with all of you is um there's this um university which is world quant university which offers a free master's degree in financial engineering so i also went to their university like i also went to the website and saw the module that they offer and it is like phenomenal what I have studied or let's say what most of the universities, uh, what they have in their curriculum is what that university teaches. And it is absolutely for free. So, I mean, if you just want to learn the knowledge and the skill set, you can pretty much sit in any country and learn it. But as Komal suggested, if you want to, you know, experience the work culture, uh, like how US is as a place and because things are very different, as she said, like back in India and in the United States then yeah, I mean, it would be a great opportunity. Uh, so this comes uh, like to an end of my, you know, and this is like my last question to you, Gomal, like any advice for future quant aspirants, anything you want to mention, maybe it can be people who are looking to switch into quant finance or let's say people who are planning to come to United States. 
uh, I think during my during our conversation, I've given a lot of advices <laughs> already. But um, one thing that I would like to say for somebody who's looking to switch in quant is read. There is a lot of material available on LinkedIn through Mehul, uh, through others. Like follow people, read on it. If you find that this is something that interests you or, you know, this is something that you want to try out, do try it out. For somebody who already knows what it is and, you know, they're really interested and they want to pursue a career out of it, uh, I would really say that do your homework well, strengthen your math concepts because that is very, very important. And like I mentioned before, during our conversation, do your homework well. That is very important. And I feel that can go a long way in um, how your career is getting shaped. And uh, quants like finance involves a lot of lot of things. So just uh, pick something that interests you, one thing, and just go deeper in it because there is no limit to how deep you can go. Instead of like aiming to uh, aiming for a very broad bo broad spectrum, I would say just like pick one thing and just uh, master it. Uh, sure, sure, uh, Komal. Thank you, thank you, Komal. Like for all the suggestions, um, I still feel like um, like you did a great job, and you know, like cracking into uh, Ivy League, like Columbia University, because um, uh, it's it's a big thing for you know a lot of lot of contest fans coming to US and pursuing, uh, masters from a uh, you know Ivy League. So thank you so much for joining uh in the podcast, and thank you for sharing your experience. Thank you, Mehul. It was great to be here. Sure. Bye. Bye.